Are you frustrated with online dating? Confused by all the new apps and fancy dating sites? Do you find yourself choosing the wrong person again and again? Well, studies show that hiring a dating coach can maximize your online dating experience. So no worries, I've got you. And I've created a virtual course called Doing Dating Right. It's a five video series that you can complete at your own pace in your own space, right at home. How to write your online dating bio, pick that perfect picture, and so much more. Want more info? Go to my website at jenniferherbits.com. Again, it's jenniferherbits.com. Good morning, good morning. This is Doing Relationships Right. I'm Jennifer Hervitz, and I'm your host every Tuesday, and now every other Friday because I'm tired. I'm just tired. I just Jen is every other Friday now. You know how it goes. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, this is my is this my second or my third episode of 2022. I can't believe it. We're here. Thank God. Um, I, I'm barely barely making it today, y'all. I'm gonna be honest. I just recovered from COVID. <laughs> I can't believe it. I stayed at home for like two years. I swear to God, I never left my house. And then I decided to go away for New Year's Eve like a dummy. And I was gone for not even kidding you three days and I came home with COVID. So happy new year, everybody. COVID it was. Um, Please get your vaccines and wear your masks because I don't know what would have happened to me if I had not been vaccinated and boosted. So that's my little story. I'll start out there. And then I'm going to tell you right now, I have a guest. I'm so excited about her. Laura, I'm so excited to have you, but I'm going to introduce you. So we'll just wait one minute. Um, Laura uh, Friedman Williams. Laura, did I say it right? Friedman Williams? Yes. <laughs> yes. Hey, is here. And we're talking about my most favorite subject of all, which is sex and dating and all that good stuff. And she has a new book that's out and it is called, I'm going to get it right. It is called A Memoir of Sex and Dating After a Marriage Ends. Yes. I love it. Hello, Laura. Hello. How are you, darling? I'm, I'm Thank- fine. Thank you. Although <laughs> I'm, I am laughing when you say you hadn't gone out in two years and we're talking about sex God. and dating in the time of COVID, which really should have its own tagline, which is like no sex and dating I in mean, the time of COVID. <laughs> I swear. I'm like, come on. My, my clients are like Jennifer. I'm so over the whole Zoom crap and all this. Please, what can I? I'm like, no. No, you can't. I tell them no. I know. It's very frustrating. It's like we're really, oh, um, you know, it's enough. a dry spell. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So tell me, hi, hi, hi. Tell me about you. Yes. Tell me how, how how did this start? What what is your life? You have a book that's out, and I'm yeah. I'm so excited to hear all about it. Thank you. But how did this start? How did this start for you? I'm well, um, for me. I was uh, married for a long time. I was with my husband for 27 years, and um, that's a long yeah, it was a long time. And I thought we would be together forever. I really didn't. I never thought about like a starter marriage. Like for me, marriage was the real deal. Um, I had a real fairy tale version of marriages. And um, when I found out um, 27 years into it that he was having an affair, um, the marriage ended. And, I, you know, it wasn't really clear uh, from either of our points of view whether or not that was going to be the, the deal breaker. I think both of us were very committed in many ways, <clears throat> obviously me more so, um, to the marriage. But it wasn't obvious that it was, it was going to end. I think there, we both were willing to work on it a little bit. We did separate immediately, though. Like within 48 hours, he'd moved out. So it was, you know, a very, very traumatic time for me and for my, you know, our children, our three children um, who were eight, you know, seven to 17, 17, yeah, about seven years old to 17 years old, three children. And, um, you know, it's really when people talk about divorce being, uh, you know, grieving process, it really does feel like a death. You know, it's the death of the family that you knew. It's the death of the family you thought you were going to have going forward. There's a lot of restructuring and regrouping, and it's just shocking. You know, it's like (sighs) your day-to-day, and I didn't want it. It wasn't something, you know, I wasn't having like midlife pangs of is this all there is. I'd accepted that there were compromises in marriage and that this is all that there was. Some days I really loved my husband, and some days I loathed him, and I accepted that. Um, So about five, six months after we separated. I, th- I think for those first, you know, that first half year, I was just, I just cried around the clock and then pulled myself out of bed best I could to, you know, help the kids and get them off to school. They were all still living at home. My oldest daughter was a senior in high school. So I was really trying to like turn some of the focus to her prom and her graduation and making things happy. And it was all so fraught for her, you know, because the older kids knew about the affair and they weren't speaking to their dad. Oh, really? So, yes. Yeah, so it was very, okay. it was like right. so horrible for them. So hard. And, right. um, 
you know, just a lot to coach them through. And then finally, I guess when summer came and there was like a little bit of a lull where I could sort of finally, you know, pick my head up and breathe for a second, I thought, well, now what? You know, I'm... Which a lot of us do. Yeah. I feel like a lot of women listening are like, this is so relatable, Laura. We yeah. all, I feel like so many of us have been there. You're like telling my story. <laughs> kind of, kind of, sort of, a little bit. I right? think it's the Which way it goes. Yeah. You know, I think yeah. the question is how long it takes. Right. And for everybody, it's different. You know, right. I will, one of the things that is always, um, that weighs on me still four years after the separation um, is why couldn't I go back to being married? You know, there was 27 years and then there was this four month affair. And why couldn't I just go back? Right. Why couldn't I, I? I don't blame you. I think yeah. that's right. Did you, do you have guilt? Do you mind me asking? Can we talk about anything? Anything, do anything. Do you have guilt or, with your kids still? Yeah, do sure. You feel, yeah, me too. Every day. Yep. Every day. And I wanted it. So, I mean, mm. it, it's it's unbelievable. You know, I yeah. still, people say, oh, you you ever, no, I have, I have um, guilt every day. My kids are fine and I have guilt. It's day. interesting because I do say to people, I think sometimes when people are the ones, like when the women I speak with, when they're the ones who are guiding it more, yeah. when they're mm -hmm. the ones exiting the marriage, there's a lot of apology and a lot of guilt mm -hmm. and a lot mm -hmm. of, well, you didn't want this. Like I wanted it. So I kind of deserve it. And I always say oh, like, yeah. whatever... Yeah got you to your to your place of divorce you're saying it's not easy it's not for the weak nobody no. does it to make their lives easier God. you know <laughs> Although so. I, thought, I thought at the time I, sure I really yes. did, like my husband and I we decided together it was mutual and we just thought we were doing what was I don't know you know what this is a whole other discussion we can yeah. have it but I mean you know you just never know and until yeah. you go through it you don't know no, you, you really don't. don't. You just don't. You don't know what you're going to feel. You're not going. You know. just all of it is like anything in life that you don't see right. coming. You or you know you just haven't experienced it before. Yeah, right. So I think there is still a lot of guilt for me and the question of why I could never really look at my husband again. You know, like we'd grown up together in so many ways. We met in college. We were 20 years old. We started dating. We moved in together right after college. So we'd really spent a lot of formative years together. And um, it was very hard for me to understand, why are you in my mind, like dead to me? Why can't right. I look at you? Oh, okay. Why can't you touch my arm? I, I mean, I was like complete, I would recoil. Even now, I, I, you know, every once in a while, he'll give me a hug and I'll just absolutely like, you know, fold into myself. Like it's the right. last thing I want is for him to touch me. So I, I do think about that a lot. But on the other hand, what happened was that when I asked that question of now what, and could there be life outside of this? So we hadn't decided that we were going to get divorced. We were going to couples therapy and trying to figure out what to do. But we, I was adamant that I be allowed uh, to date, you know, that okay. I should date because I need to make an active decision here. Okay. So you got, so you found out about the affair mm -hmm. and then you decided to go to couples therapy, mm -hmm. which I think that's amazing. And during that time, you were allowed to date while you were in couples therapy. I just want to get it straight. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I remember the therapist saying to us, well, you guys have decided to separate. He's living elsewhere. Um, what are the parameters of the separation going to be? And I said, awesome. I, what do you mean? And she said, like, for example, with dating, are you going to be dating other people? And I, without hesitating, I said, absolutely yes. <laughs> and like, he yes, was really taken aback. Really? Uh, really? Yeah. He did not I expect that. I don't, Oh, he was taken aback, but he not the was. therapist. No, the therapist was. was like, okay. I mean, she, she yeah, didn't know same. us. I think right. in his mind, that was like the last thing I wanted to do. I think in his mind, oh. he really felt that I would want to save the marriage. I don't think he imagined I was interested or curious or that I would ever walk away. It was not in oh. keeping with who I was as a, wow. as a wife and wow. a mother and a woman. So he was really shocked. And I said, well, you tried it already. I need to know what's out there so Good that if I decide to recommit to you, then I, I know that I'm doing the right thing. But I wasn't planning on doing anything about it. When I said that, I was still like a shell of myself. So sure. I wasn't really going to do anything. And then, as I said, summer came and I had this one night where I really thought, I, I got to get out of here. I have to, you know, I was in my house. Um, he and I shared like a summer, a summer home or country house and we would toggle back and forth, you know, to, depending on who was with the kids. And right, he right. was there with our youngest daughter. And so I was just kind of trapped in my bedroom like, I can't leave the bedroom. I don't want to talk to him. And so this is the bedroom where I found, you know, like we've had so many experiences in the bedroom, sure, including sure, finding sure. out that this is like where I confronted him when he had the affair. And what am I doing here? I'm just going to die like this. I'm going to spend, you know, the rest of my life just slowly wilting away in this room. 
while oh he's living his life and my kids are living their lives and I'm, mine has just been like someone pulled the plug. So I got out of there. Um, and I, I often say I was more scared of staying in that room than I was to know what was on the other side of it. Oh, I like that. So That's I went to yeah. a bar by myself and, um, you know, it was really scary. I, I had no idea. But I like it now. Are you, are you okay with it now being by yourself at a bar or no? Do you still yeah, like I mean, it's COVID. It's I been a long my, time, you know, yeah, like too. bars. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay. From I'm what okay. I remember, I loved it. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> like an animal in the wild. And right? um, I can't wait to get back to it. I enjoyed it. I, I think it was like the excitement of not knowing what it was going right. to be. You know, you right. sit there and maybe nothing happens. You know, maybe there's no one to talk to or suddenly, you know, someone sidles up and there's a conversation and a spark. I did, in the months that followed, I did meet two people like at bar random bars like in the country really rural area where I was convinced that there were no single men under the age of 75 so I felt I felt like my odds were low but I really made the most of them I was pretty I, I was pretty proud uh so you know that night that I went out it was such a surreal feeling because mm -hmm. I thought well the last time I went out on my own was never Right. I mean, I would have been. In, I was in college, so I would have been with right. my girlfriends. Oh my God, that's right. We have to think about because you were married for twenty. Right. We'd been. We started dating right, right after I turned twenty. Um, oh my God, because mm -hmm. right. I was married thirteen years, so I can. Still, oh, wow. I could have still remembered yeah. like dating. You know. Yeah, because I dated right. Oh my gosh, right. So you're sitting there, right? No, we weren't even legal. I mean, I was. Uh, I oh. was not even of legal of legal. Were you horrified? Like were you horrified? Were you like, I don't even know. I don't even know what I would do. Yeah. I mean, I put on, I got dressed, I put on a nice dress, I, I put on some like, this special rose oil my friend gave me that made me smell so nice. I found okay. a thong, you know, it was like my wife's probably like 20 years old. It's amazing it even held up, you know, that the elastic still worked. Um, and I shaved, you know, I, I did what yeah. I had to do. It was like something, there was some inner voice telling me this okay, is good, what good, you good. should look like. And I was pretty horrified. And I think the bartenders were pretty horrified too. I think they felt bad for me. Like I was just sitting there by myself, like sort of between groups of people. I was kind of eavesdropping on their conversations. I had my margarita. I didn't really know what to do with myself, but I just thought, just like play this role. Like it's your, yeah. it's a role that you, you play. Go. Like you you're a divorcee out on the town on a Saturday night. And that's all there is to it. This is what you look like, period. So right. eventually this man started talking to me and, um, you know, fast forward, I went back to his hotel with him. He was in town for the weekend. He was on a, a, like a solo motorcycle trip through the area. And I went back to his hotel room and slept with him. And, and? Um, it was like a complete reawakening for me. Oh, it was like that question of that what's too. on the My other side. <gasps> I would do anything to have that one first night again. <laughs> See, now my experience was different. Oh, I really? Well, you know what? I was so, um, I thought I was so ready for it, mm. you know? And I think like everyone's experience is different. Again, mm -hmm. you just don't know. Yeah. And I remember going into the bathroom and taking a towel and just crying Aww. into the towel because like, I was like, I just wasn't, I wasn't prepared. My, mm -hmm. my, I thought it, I thought, oh my, I can do this and I've got this and I'm, I'm, and I, the same thing, but I was not ready. I was, it was too soon. I think for me to be doing, and then it, then it changed. <laughs> <laughs> you caught up quickly. Oh, I caught up. I was real your quick. Your brain caught up like, with oh, your body. <laughs> where's the Where's the penis? Let's go. I was like, seriously, I was like a nightmare. It was a nightmare. Well, it's like you've been let out of a cage. I mean, you're exactly. like, can I? Where right. do I have more? I mean, I felt like I wanted to wear a sign that's like open for business, or you know, <laughs> I would have a joke like even during the beginning of COVID when uh, it didn't seem like it was going to be a two year thing or more. I would, you know, was like, I'm going to go to a bar and I'm going to put a sign up that says open for business or open 24 seven or <laughs> enter any way you like. <laughs> okay. So this is about, so, okay, keep going. I'm not going to interrupt you. Okay. Keep so, going. um, no, I actually expected, it's interesting that you felt that way. I fully yeah. expected to feel sad. I fully mm -hmm. expected for the, the first night to be a real trigger. Um, okay. to say, you know, you're going to learn something from this. And it's hard to say what that's going to be. If it's going to be good or bad, probably it's going to be a mixed bag. And probably what you're going to feel is you wish you were with your husband because he knew your body so intimately and he knew what worked for you. Right. And you weren't self-conscious in front of him. You know, all of these things that made him very safe. And you're probably really going to miss that. But I didn't. 
I didn't either. Yeah. It was like <laughs> safe. I don't want safe. Yeah. There's a man telling me my pussy is beautiful. I've no <laughs> man has ever said that to me. Ever, I didn't know right? people talked ever. like that. <laughs> Mine was like, I, I, I mean, I, I don't even know if I had sex for a year. I think it was a year. And I remember being like, I, you know, I was worried about different things, though. I was worried mm. about my scars. And mm. I was worried about, like, you know, this. Like, I never thought anyone was going to see me naked again. Yeah. I so worried me, about I that, too. Like, yeah. And then I was like, wait a minute. And then after I got over that, and you're right, guys would say things like that. I was like, what? Oh, my. Like, <laughs> bring it. Bring it. Say it again. You know? Like, what do you mean? It was like, oh, like, you know, oh, they actually, you can do this? Yeah. This like you can do? I would just laugh. And sometimes, I, I mean, some, I did that first time. I just laughed. And he was like, why are you laughing? And I was like, oh, sorry. I, I didn't realize like that was, you were serious. Like, did you just use the word pussy? <laughs> Describing my vagina, you're like that's fabulous, <laughs> and it's taken me all this time to be able to say it, where it just rolls off my tongue naturally. You know, I would try to t- tell my friends what he said in the aftermath, and I would be like, "He used the p word." Because <laughs> was- your married friends were like, <gasps> "Aghast, a gasp, and like- jealous." AF. I mean, they right. were like, how do we get They're some of that? Yeah. Yes, they were. They were. Yeah. And they were like, tell us more. Tell us the story again. Tell us what happened. Oh you know, tell us every second of it. They were like, they hung on every word. It was like the best. Telling them was almost better than the sex, you know. Now, did their husbands feel like you, they, this is what happened to me. A lot of my married friends weren't allowed to hang out with me anymore. Oh. Did um, that happen to you? No. No. Oh. No. I don't know. It's possible that they should not have been allowed to. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like all of a sudden, like Hervitz was divorced and now you can't go with her because she does single women things. Yeah. I think I don't. Trouble. Yeah. It's a good question. I mean, I get that. And I think that there was there was one friend I remember where I, I felt like I was like a bad influence. You know, I felt like the husband was sort of like framing me as a bad influence. Yes. And I just yeah. thought it was so incongruous with ha- the way I thought of myself is this like oh. really like good rule abiding citizen you know i'm so straight i'm so you, like i follow the rules you are in every day yeah i am really follow the rules oh you know so God, for see, me not, it was like so it was not a real shock. You, you know you, you're i'm the least person you should worry about except that then i really wasn't the least that you should worry about because i was really embracing what it meant to be single and like throwing my win- marriage you know out the window like okay okay well, so then what happened Okay, so I had I sex this. with him, and okay. um, it was great. It was a one-night stand. We didn't exchange numbers or anything, and I went home a changed woman. I thought, well, okay. if that's what sex is, I want more of it. Now I okay. know what it is. I haven't yeah. really known this before. I'm sure I did, you know, years earlier before my daughter, my first daughter was born, but it had been a couple decades, um, and I felt so good. I felt so free. I felt so out of my body, like out of my mind. You know, I just felt so good in every way. I wanted more. Those and, endorphins. Yeah, I was oxytocin. Wow. Dopamine. I mean, better than any drug or alcohol or anything. It was like I really. That was a, such a big night for me because I really, I didn't think I would feel so wholeheartedly into it. I thought there would be a lot of sadness. So after that, um, I wanted more, and I really was like not sure how to get it. Because, again, I was in a very small town up in the country in upstate New York for the summer. And I had some child home with me almost all the time. And I wasn't ready to go online because I was scared that my husband might see that I was online. I felt very self-conscious about it. Um, And so it was just hard to meet people. But I managed. And, uh, you know, I I, I bumped into an old contractor at the grocery store. We changed numbers. That was, you know, my second encounter. I went back to another bar, Fred hooked me up with somebody, you know, somebody she met at her gym. So I found my way and I, and I, it became clear to me by the time I was on like the third or fourth man that I really was on a fact finding mission, that I was really wanting to know A, what life looked like as a single woman, B, what, did I want to be single forever? Did I want to get, be remarried? What did a relationship look like? And was that something I wanted? And C, like, what did men like what did men want from women what was sexy to men and was that something that was also appealing to me so it was like there were a lot of things happening but I was very clear I don't want at that point I was very clear I just want more of this I don't want to be with anyone right. long term I don't want to be remarried I just want to be sowing my wild oats and and learning from it not just having fun for fun's sake there's believe me there's value in that especially when you're grieving and you have a night that's joyful 
take it and run. You know, I, yeah. I didn't want to deprive, I didn't, I never felt that I was depriving myself, but I was clear that I needed to learn something, something was happening. And I think that, how do I say this without, you know, I think that that's the best way to go about it. I, I tell people all the time that I wish I would have waited longer to date. Mm. And that's not what I really meant. <laughs> like, I, I feel like I, I, I wish I would have waited longer to be serious yeah. about someone. It, I had no problem with the sex part of it. Like, I think every woman should, um, if they feel you know, like that's what they want, do what, what you did, right? Like, and not be judged. No. Like, stop judging no. women. I mean, oh my God, she's running, she's swinging from the rafters. She's running around sleeping right. with everyone. You know what? Stop. You know, and who gives a shit what she's doing? Let, you know, everyone needs to find their own path. Yep. My problem was, is that I immediately, you know, um, I was trying to fill a void yeah. and looking for a relationship. And yep. that's, that's not what, you know. That's hard. Look, what it could have should have, right? I yeah. mean, that's my book. But I would have rather have just made it about a learning experience to see what the, you see what I'm saying? I would have rather yeah. done you. That would have been great. Well, I think what's good about it and what makes it a little easier, you know, if people are listening and they're contemplating dating, you know, for the first time is that if you're not looking for something serious, your bar can be pretty low. And if your point is just to build up your confidence, find some freedom and joy in sex, Give yourself the freedom to do it. Don't make apologies. It, it really almost doesn't matter who you're sleeping with as long as that person is respectful and it's consensual. You know, I think in that sense, that was sort of the way that I took it was like, there's a lot of different kinds of people out in the world. I've been with one kind. And let me just see who else is out there and, and what the experiences are like. You know, people that have been, uh, you know, bachelors their entire lives and now in midlife. And like I met one who really wanted to get married. So I knew that I was not for him because right. I didn't, I met someone who had been a bachelor all those years and it was very clear why. Um, right. And that was almost too much for me too. Yeah, so, yeah. but it was, I was learning along the way. Like, what does it mean? Is What does it mean to date somebody who has children or who doesn't have children, who's always been single or who you know, is like works all over the country and is always traveling or, you know, has been divorced wow. four times, like what, whatever it is, you know, I, e each person brought a lot of information to the table for me. I wasn't shy about asking questions, but my bar was low. Like I, I really just needed, I wanted to have sex and I wanted somebody to be kind to me and to be respectful and I wanted to have fun and to feel free. And that was really all I cared about for those many, you know, those first encounters. It, it I mean, changed awesome. over time. Sure, sure. Anyone who's been through a divorce knows co-parenting is not all rainbows and sunshine, especially when alcohol abuse is involved. Pair these challenges with a pandemic and you have a perfect storm. Soberlink's alcohol monitoring system is the most convenient, reliable, and reasonable way for a parent to provide evidence that they are not drinking during parenting time. Soberlink's real-time alerts make it easy to negotiate with any party. Judges rest assured that the child is safe. Attorneys get court admissible evidence of sobriety. And both parents have empowerment and peace of mind. Do divorce right and trust the experts in remote alcohol monitoring technology to keep your kids safe, happy, and well-adjusted. To download the guide, Five Non-Negotiables for Embracing a New Normal that I developed with Soberlink, visit www.soberlink.com backslash DRR. So did you go, and so and back to the story. So then how long did you do this before you decided I'm done? With my, like you didn't want to go back to your husband? Um, by fall. So that must have been about seven months. Um, okay. I think by the time we came back in, to New York City where we live in September and, you know, the kids went back to school and we weren't going back, you know, it was clear, like we'd taken a hiatus from couples therapy uh, because we were not in the city over the summer. And it became clear that we were not going to go back to therapy. I think that I, I asked him if he could talk to me one day and we sat outside in a park and had one of the saddest conversations of my entire life, you know, where I said, like, what's happening? What do you see happening here? And he said, I think it's kind of in your court. And I thought, okay, then it's over because wow. you're not fighting for me. And... Um, I'm ready to let it go. Wow. So I think that that's that. And it was heartbreaking. You know, it was yeah. just like sitting outside in a park, you know, that I'd taken my children to for years. Oh, you're kidding um, me. Yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> no, no, no. Don't, don't apologize. I just get it. I get it. I understand. Yeah. It's I, like you can feel, and this is, you yes. know, one of, one of the great 
surprises to me in where I am now and where I've been for the past, you know, four years really is that you can in the same moment feel great joy and great grief and, and freedom and also, you know, the, the binds that, that tie you. It's, it's all, it all happens at the same time. So it, for me, I had, all I wanted was to be clear. I wanted to be clear that my marriage was over. That didn't mean I felt good about it, happy about it, relieved. I felt none of that. I just felt clear that I wasn't going to be able to be with him again in the way that he wanted somebody to be right. with him. Right. That was clear. And that's interesting. That's how you say that because it, it, you're right. It's the clarity you needed. Yeah. Right? It was just, the, just yeah. And that was because for months yeah. I'd been seeking clarity. You know, for months it was like I remember friends would say, what are you going to do? Do you think you guys will get back together? Uh, and I would say, I, I don't know. I think it's like 50-50 at this point. And they would like, you know, sort of like, oh, my God, like the odds are so low. Like they thought it would be more like a 75-25, you know, in his favor. And I said, I don't know. I can't find my way back to him. I can't even look at him. You know, it, months and months had passed, and I couldn't even look at him. How was I going to climb back into bed with this man? And he wanted something new. He didn't want what we had. He wanted something new. How right. could I do that? I didn't even understand what he wanted. I didn't know it was wrong. I didn't, you know, for me, it was like, I was happy in my marriage. So how can I say I can be something else when I liked who I right. was? Right. Oh my God. But right. at the same time, now that I've had a taste of something else, I want more of it. So that's what, what I'm saying that you can have both at the same time. That yeah, was how I People don't get that. That, that. I feel like, like people... Not people in general, but a lot of people don't understand that how you can want two completely yeah. different things at once. It's so hard until to understand. You, it's so hard to understand, but until you go through, I don't know why I'm getting so emotional. I'm like about to cry. Until uh, you go through it, you don't understand it, right? Yeah, it's probably. I I've heard some people feel very extra emotional after COVID. By the way, I don't know if that's oh, like a maybe thing. That's what it is. Yeah, I feel be. like I'm about to cry. It, I don't know it's what, like I, it's like PMS, but it's like COVID. Oh, God, it's God like, for the love of God, I just I can't I can't take both of those at the same time. I'm telling you right now, but it's yeah. so true. Like I have a client right now who is literally deciding it the same if mm. she's going to stay or she's going to go, and it's like. You know, some people that are I mean, some people, people that are married and happily married or whatever, yeah. blah blah blah, they just are like, no, I don't understand why you would ever no, because you don't know. You haven't been there. Your mm -hmm. heart does. You know, you can't. The emotions are so polar, two separate. Ah, oh, God, it's no. Just that's crazy. why. Also, I think we're so used to having conversations with our friends where we oh. say, if this were me, if I, if this happened to me, if my husband was blah blah blah, if my wife, <laughs> and I would say, idea. you, you really don't know. And actually, I think. What I actually love about that is that I feel like I don't really judge anyone for no. anything they do because the under, the one thing I understand is that I really just don't know. No. Uh, I don't know what people feel. I just was having this conversation with friends this weekend who were telling me about this someone who um, this woman who had an affair with her son's best friend's father for eight years. And son's best friend's oh wow okay so. Two boys, best friends for eight years, the father of one and the mother of the other had an affair. And I said, you know, it would be so easy to vilify both of them, but mm. we just don't know. We weren't in their marriage. We don't know. We don't know, we don't know. We don't we don't know, know. how their spouses treated them. We don't know why. We don't know what happened. We just don't know. It doesn't seem great. I'll give you that. But at the same time, I know right now that I don't know anything. <laughs> and I've learned that too, Laura. Yeah. I've learned that. I was used to be before all this, like you know, eight years I've been divorced, but I think it was easy to judge. Yes, and very. Vilify, and really quick to be like, oh my God, I can't believe it. Yep. But now I'm so, um, I take a breath and I'm yeah. like, you know what? We just don't know. You're right. Yeah. Have no I don't even know. You know, I think that part of the way that I was able to forgive my husband, because I realized that I didn't, I wasn't judging other people and other marriages. Like I would be able to say, well, we don't know, you know, I don't know what happened. And, and I had, I had friends who were having affairs and right. they, I didn't judge them. I felt very much like, look, you feel what you feel. You know, I can't, I can't, I'm not here to judge. I'm just here to listen. So it made me realize that there was, you can only ever know a person so well. And that even though my husband and I had been together for 27 years, and I thought had a very solid marriage, there was a lot about him I didn't know. And I forgave him. It doesn't mean right. I'm thrilled, you know, with him all the time. It doesn't mean I don't, didn't feel betrayed or hurt still sometimes. But I do feel like we all have these like very complex internal lives 
and it's not easy. And there are triggers, right? Like in midlife and deaths of parents and children growing up and moving away. Oh, that, don't tell me. Oh, God, That's I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've had two <laughs> out of three leave. So it's like, I'm, it does, yeah, right. it's hard. It's hard. Two out of three are my nest feels empty and I still have an 11 oh, year old. Like September, I've got both gone. They're both be gone at Syracuse. Oh, wow. Oh, that's, oh, yeah, great school. Right, right by yeah, you. Yeah, to come right visit. by me. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah, people love uh -huh. that school. Um, yeah, we, do. we love it. Yeah, it's, it's um, you know, it's really, I think all those things, like you don't know how you're going to feel when you become and an empty nester. it's not black and white. No. It's not black and white. And, you know, to be around people who is, like, it's just black and white. If you cheat, I'm done. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't, that's just, it's mind boggling that someone could say, if you cheat, you're done. Yeah, it's, it's amazing to me. I've had so many conversations like that. And one of the things I always say is, if anybody had told me before he had the affair, mm -hmm. you're going to find out that your husband had an affair, you're going to decide the marriage is over, then you're going to go out and have crazy amounts of sex, and then you're going to write a book about it. I forgot, I forgot about the book. We've been talking <laughs> yeah. for 40 minutes, and I'm like, forgot about the damn book. Well, it's all in the book. This is all in the book. It's, it's no all, problem. Okay, great. It's, it's no all in the book. Okay. But the I don't have I the would, book. Excuse oh, me. I don't oh. have the book. I oh need to gosh. get the book. Yeah. I'm gonna get. I'm okay. gonna, no, I'm gonna. We're gonna okay. get done with this, and I'm gonna order the book. Thank you. It's a big peach on the front. <laughs> it's a big, a big juicy peach. peach. Yes, available. A big juicy available. peach. I love it. Yes, available. yes. I love it. Um, you know, it was very. It was like a very long conversation with the publishers about how to sexualize fruit. So you know, now cool. I was like, I mean, you know, you, there's a lot of images of fruit that yeah. looks kind of. That's an emoji too. A peach is yeah. a little tush. Yeah, I love it. Take so, a bite out of that. I, I, I feel like you just don't know. You don't know what you don't know. And don't I know. also, I think, you know, for me now I'm 51, um, how thrilling it is to not necessarily know what's next. You know, when I thought that my life was very <sighs> scripted and I, and I was comfortable in that script. I didn't, I didn't have any, what I, what, somebody asked me recently, what did you imagine for yourself, you know, over time, oh, interesting question. you know, knowing that your kids would leave, like two were teenagers already and imagining that life would keep changing. So first of all, um, I had this sort of later in life baby in part because I think I was, I wanted another baby, but also I was really scared of all the changes that were going to happen when my kids left. So I was like, I'll have one more. Why not? <laughs> I so, feel like I should have done that. I mean, I think a lot of people were like, you were yeah. brilliant to wait because now you've got this one who's like basically at home with you forever. You know, <sighs> she is, she's like 11. I got a lot of years with her, <laughs> right? It's like my son is in college in California. My daughter's about to graduate. We just I just helped her with her grad school applications, you know, but I've got his baby at home. Oh, you're so lucky fun. girl. You're so lucky. Me. Yeah. So but part of it, you know, was to stave off what's next. Sure. I well now I, I just it. bought myself another 18 years of what's you know with before. So some so someone asked me the other day, what did you think? And I said, I really just thought more of the same. You know, like the kids will grow up, but they'll come home and I'll still be managing their lives from afar and I'll keep the house clean and I'll, you know, I was a stay home mom and I was in every PTA and I'll just keep doing all the stuff I've done just in different ways. And if I have a little free time, maybe when my husband travels, I'll travel with him or, you know, he'll look. Yeah. Yeah. But now look. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look, you wrote a book yeah. and you're and you're a published author and you're and you're having sex. Yeah. And your life is, oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. Definitely see, didn't see like, that coming. No. That's okay. I didn't see anything that I'm doing coming either. And that's kind Everything of the gift that, of it, right? I mean, it's right. like I could have had more of the same and I would never have known anything else. And that would have been so in many ways, I I wish I could have had that, you know. Yeah. But then there's the other part of me that's like, thank God your husband had an affair because look right. what it gave you. A it, big present. It a gave you a chapter this. two, a new a addition, two. a completely new addition. There was oh. nothing prescribed or obvious about the path I took. And Isn't um, it interesting, this whole yeah. thing. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. It's the whole thing is just, I mean, if I, I think about where I was eight years ago and I'm like, I cannot believe what I've done. Yeah. Yeah. And, like in the second right? part. Yeah. It's crazy. And there's so much more, you know. I And now I've, you know. Yeah, you've made a whole just, life out of it. I don't know. It's just insane. Yeah, I think about that a lot. And I think about that, you know, when I get like DMs from women who've read the book and say like, well, there's some women say a thank you for um, releasing me from the shame of like oh. being so sexual, you know, and feeling like it's wrong to be, to have sex with so many men or to be so out there. Have I was one thinking night that stands. too. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's one thing that for me, like I never was outspoken about sex before. So this is very funny to me that I'm like the spokeswoman for, uh, you know, 
sex after married life <laughs> for having a lot of it and I for not it. necessarily being monogamous, you know, but being honest. I'm all about yes. honesty. But then my, my point after being honest is you should just do what you want to do. Commit to yourself to what you want. And I think people have a hard time with that. I know I did. Yeah. I really had yeah. to. Well, it's hard. It's hard to wrap your head around it. I mean, I felt a yeah. lot of shame because I, I thought, did. is this yeah. okay? Like, is, am I getting in trouble? And I kept thinking, I'm going to get busted. Like my, well, that was me. Yeah. I yeah. felt the same way. I mean, my family was awful. I mean, they said horrible things to oh. me. You're, you're slutting around oh. and you're, you're, you're dating too many people and the kids, are, the kids aren't going to respect you. I was like, my own family. You know, wow. it's like, come on. That's rough. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, I just hard. didn't tell anybody what I was doing in my family. That's so. what I should have done. Well, I wrote about it. My problem was I wrote about it, Laura. I had a blog that was telling everybody what I was doing. I wrote a blog called yeah. My Perfect Pussy. That was my first mistake. <laughs> yeah. I think that's you, why my family was upset. You kind of They're ripped like, the band-aid off. <laughs> you ripped the thong off that was all was over like, after you know, that. Here we go. Watch this. I mean, I was a little bit, you know, that's why my family was like, what the fuck? I mean, yeah, they, they didn't see it I coming. Have, maybe I should have, shh. Kept it on the down. That would have been the smartest yeah. thing, Laura. That would have been good well, for Well, I kept it, and then I published a book about it. So really, it was like, <laughs> I remember the night that I told my mom, like, well, you know, I've been, like, dating a lot, and, like, not really dating, just kind of sleeping around, and, you know, a lot. Like, and, and she was like, okay. You know? <laughs> but, Wait a minute. It's going to be a book? Right, Come oh. on. A bestseller? Wait a minute. <laughs> Do you think Netflix would like to make a series <laughs> about that, Laura? Been there. Been there. I wrote a couple pilots. If you want to get together, we can make another one. I bet I've we could. There. I bet we'd have a good time. <laughs> I'll send you my pilot. We'll see what we can do. Yeah, sure. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'll tell you. It's just, it's, it's just a crazy ride that we've been Yeah. And I'm here, you know, I've been dating somebody and he was, he's number six in the book. He was like six. And then I continued to date after him. Um, and he kind of, you know, he's still in the picture. It's been three years oh. and he's still in the picture. But nice. I also, you know, say all the time, like, I'm not done sewing my oats. I'm not Does done. Does he know? Yeah, he knows. No, I'm I, very, I, you know, yeah. I think we've, we've been together long enough and I've been very clear with him. Like, I want to be with you. I love being okay, with you. Okay, do you want to laugh? Yeah. Do you want to laugh? Yeah. My number 13. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, my number 13 was my five-year relationship. Oh, wow. And he bought a jersey. It was number 13. And he wore it when he met to me, to my kids uh, track me. And he's like, I'm number 13. I'm like, okay, this is not happening right now. How That's great is amazing. that? He's like, I'm number 13. And it's like I'm lucky like, number oh. 13. It's the perfect number. That's really funny. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, he's number six is very proud of his status. You know, he's. Um, he's always like in the beginning, he would introduce himself to people like I'm number six. And I was like, you can tell them your name. That's fine. (laughs) Um, and people say, is he upset? And I always say, no, he loves it because he outlasted seven, eight, nine, 10, you name it. He's still here. I mean, that's a lot of gravitas in that being the number that stayed. Yeah. Number 13 was on the podcast. I'm sure you've heard oh. the podcast a couple of times. He's in both awesome. my books. That's he awesome. He made the books. Okay. So you know yeah, it's yeah. okay. I've got my husband. I've got my number 13. It's all good. And then, yeah, okay. that's funny. That's very funny. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's not, none of it's, there's no, there's no path that anybody wrote. You know, I think in, no. in my case, I realized I want to be with somebody. It's nice to be in a relationship. I'm not done seeing what's out there. And just be feeling free. Not even seeing what's out there. It's not that I'm looking for something better or different. I'm not because I, I really, he's really good to me. He's really kind and, I, and we have great sex and I like being with him. But I'm not done being seen, you know, and oh, I, I love that. I'm not done being seen. I love I that. I felt invisible for a long time, I love you know, that even in my, in my household. You know, I was like the main supporting actress of everybody else's lives. And yeah. so now I feel like I have this thing that's all mine. I get to decide. And I'm not ready to let that go. And I've been very honest with him. Like, this is a big part of me, and I'm not ready to let it go. COVID uh, has really put a damper on things. So it's not like I've been able to do a lot with that. But I will, you know, and he knows that. Like, I'm not going to go out and date another person. I don't have another – I don't have enough in me to give to another person. But – um my body I'll give to anybody, let's be honest. They're like, take it. <laughs> but meanwhile, the sex is so good with your number six. Yeah, it is still good. That's how my number 13 is. Yeah, that's it's like, I don't know if I can. I know, I it's know. hard. I don't know what the answer is. You know, I, I know. I'm all about freedom and doing what you want to do and no shame and be honest because no. then you live with yourself. Very, It's very easy to live with yourself when you're honest with people. You know, well, I was honest with my Lauren. I said that after my kids go to college, I'm leaving. Oh, I got to get out of here. I got to. Wow. And he didn't believe me. <gasps> I know. And then so what happened? Fight, now, I, well, we broke up and now he's mad at me. And like, he's like, I don't understand. I'm like, well, you didn't, oh. I told you. I told you I was leaving. Leaving the relationship you know? or like leaving where you are? Leaving where I am. Well, can he go with you? 
No, oh. he, no, he has he has a baby like you. He has a little one. Oh, so he's yeah. He doesn't want a long distance relationship, no. or you don't. I don't know. Now we don't know. But I mean, ugh, we're just it's not, see. This is the Michigas, the stuff that you have, everyone has to do. Right, with, doesn't you know? go away. It's like it doesn't you're go like, away. I'm divorced. The Michigas is over. It's like. <laughs> I'm divorced and I've got a new set of Michigas. Yes, and you just have to learn that stuff. It's like, do you stay with the, you know, we could go on for days. I love yeah. this podcast. This yeah. is a great, Lord. I'm so glad we did this post COVID. Yes, I'm so happy. Yes, yes. Oh, I'm so glad great. you're feeling better. I feel and, so much better. Yeah, I do. I'm glad. Thank you, and, Thank um, you. you know, and I'm curious to see where you go from here. I'd like to interview you and know where you go from oh, here. Let's do, let's do it. Let's do it. Wait, I'd like, like you have a podcast too? No. No, oh, let's make one. Let's have one. Like, I just want to come have, back. I have a, I have an idea for a podcast. I have a thought for a podcast, but because I always I'm such a talker, I could talk all day. I think so, you're great, and you're fabulous. Thank and you're you. Great. Oh, that's so um, nice of you. It's great to have you, and you're you're just good at this, and you should have one. And when you have one, I'll come on yours and be your first right. guest. I want to hear what happens after September. Oh, I would love to. Yeah. I would love that. Let's Syracuse. do a cliffhanger. It's a cliffhanger. <laughs> Totally. What? Ha- where will Jennifer go? Will Laura stay with number six? Where's number oh thirteen? God. Is he still wearing his jersey? I mean, right? It's great. <laughs> this is fabulous. I love it. Okay, wait, forget this all. I have a, we have bigger fish to fry right now. Okay, Laura, yes. Where do we find your book? This is oh, most important. You. It's going to be in the show notes too. Oh, super. Laura, where do we, where um, do we find your book? You can find it on Amazon. You can find it. I, I like to promote uh, local bookstores always, but it won't be in local bookstores until May. That's when it comes out in paper book, and that's okay. when it'll be available more widely in your independent bookstores. So until then, it can be purchased on Amazon. Or okay. it can be uh, downloaded as a Kindle edition, or it can be downloaded as an audio. And I actually did the um, audio recording of it. Um, I need to talk to you about that. I have to do my books. I, neither mm. of my books are in audio. Oh, it's so weird doing the recording. It's so hard. I know. So I, I tried. Hard. I'm so, t- I'm so But I, you just do it. You know, you do a few hours a day. Um, yeah. It was nice. A lot of people, people have told me they really liked the audio. They just felt it was very intimate. And as a person who listens to a lot of audio memoirs, particularly, I get that because I like to I've hear to the re- reader. I, I really appreciate when I'm listening to a memoir and it's read by the author. It makes it of very course. different. It's a very yeah, that's big why difference. I won't do it because I know I have to do it myself. You do. Yeah, you I do. do. But you have a I nice do. voice. You'll be fine. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay. Well, okay. Um, it's called A Memoir of Sex and Dating After Marriage Ends. Yes. Oh, Minus available. It's called Available. Movies. That's the oh, subtitle. Wait. I'm going to oh. sorry. I'm going to just oh, say shoot. it's called Available: A Memoir of Sex and Dating After Marriage Ends. Hello, so, I said it wrong in the beginning. No, no, no. It's okay. fine. Every it's well, it's but, fine. Okay, but just so you know, it'll be in the show notes. Correct. That's fine. It's available. A memoir of sex and dating after marriage ends. Yes. And I'm on Instagram, Laura Friedman Williams and Twitter and whatever, but I like Instagram. And if anybody wants to reach out to me to tell me their story or whatever, I'm happy to hear from everybody all the time. So I love it. Yeah. Everything's going to be in the show notes and um, your Twitter, your everything, but I like Instagram too. So everybody follow Laura, please on Instagram and come say hi to us. And um, thank you, Laura, for being here. Thank you for having me, Jennifer. It was fun. It was so fun. fun. And everybody, everybody, everybody follow me, please. You know where, I don't know, doing relationships right. (laughs) Whatever my COVID. (laughs) brain. And um, that's it. That's it. This is a great time. I'm so glad um, everybody joined us today. Happy New Year. When do you stop saying Happy New Year? Um, Like now, probably. Okay, then this is it. (laughs) I'm saying Happy New Year. The next episode, I'm not. So just Happy New Year, everybody. Have a great day. last chance to get a Happy New Year. Go get vaccinated. (laughs) That's it. Go get vaccinated. Have a great day, everybody. Peace, love, and so much truth.